Today in this video, I am going to talk of a very important topic. And as we are continuing with the seventh house and matters related to marriage, I will explain you everything with respect to marriage only. However, whatever I am going to explain you is a standard method in astrology that have to be understood first. So basically what happens, and all of you are interested in astrology, you read about astrology, you listen about astrology, watch YouTube videos, read books, read articles and do everything. In that process, you know about astrological yogas and everything. That helps you in making prediction. Of course it does. Right, you know the combination for extramarital affair, you know the combination for multiple things that I have been discussing with you. That is all fine. But what is the difference between an astrologer, a professional one, and others? Others means astrology learners, enthusiasts, etc. Right, what is the difference? How do astrologers do things? Is it sufficient or enough to see things with respect to yogas, combinations only that is told by me or by anyone else for that matter. So see, yogas or combinations are secondary. The primary stuff is analysis of a house. So basically it goes this particular way. Someone will come to you with a question or you will have a question. And then you will check the house. You will first of all listen to the question patiently and then you will make a set of formula that from which house this question is related to. This is very basic in astrology. Questions are primarily should be mapped to houses, not to planets, not to rashis. Prime is house. Secondarily, it can be mapped with planets. Rashis are Whatever Rashi is falling in that house, that Rashi becomes important. That is the particular approach, but the prime thing is house. Right? This is most important part in astrology. Now finding the correct house. After that comes the process of house analysis. That you have to analyze a particular house. And in that analysis, there are a set of formulas that you apply. These are not formulas. This is a wrong word that I have just used. Not technically correct. So this is not formula. This is fundamental. This is the way of analysis. This is the way of astrology. In Vedic astrology, how you will do the analysis. So there are few very important fundas that I am going to clear. There are some very important uh, basic things that I am going to discuss in this particular video that you will have to keep in mind while analyzing a horoscope and remember that you cannot reach to a conclusion without proper analysis of the house that is related to the matter. So for an example, anyone will have question related to marriage. You will come to the seventh house. Now see, my teachings are a bit different. Right, our teachings are a bit different, and uh, there is a particular methodology that I generally tell people to follow. The prime point being that if it is related to marriage, you will see the seventh house. And how will be my marriage? When I will get married? How marital life will be? Will there be divorce, etc. So marriage goes to seventh house, but if there is a question related to partner, will my spouse be beautiful from where the spouse will come from, what will be their name, etc. That you will see from the seventh lord. If the question is related to sexuality, because see, in every person there is a concept of marriage, no. So what you consider as a beauty, sexuality that comes with marriage, companionship that comes with marriage, friendship that comes with marriage, what is your concept of it? Will that concept be fulfilled or not? This should be seen from Venus, the significant. So this is point number one that you have to remember. 
right and one more thing is there this is what i have been practicing since 12 13 years and i have found working so you can better say this is my methodology difference of opinion can be there but this is what i practice and preach is the basic point now the question is there is one very uh, persistent question that is being asked by some someone who watches our channel and of course i have an eye over all the comments because all of you who are watching my channel have a very special place in my heart and all of you are important so there is a particular question that someone is asking how to know why it will be beautiful very legitimate query so seventh lord connected with a benefit planet see likability the point goes to likability see who is not beautiful everyone is but the point is that as per the standards of society is the person beautiful is that standard the person is talking of that standard this likability or matching the standard of society comes from benefit planets good planet jupiter moon venus mercury so you will generally see any person who is having their ascendant influenced by these planets benefit planets they are liked by people generally liked by people they get easy name fame status so this is answer to another query what is the combination of popularity or fame in vedic astrology that also someone have been asking since long the same problem now when this same combination applies with the seventh lord because seventh lord is wife or husband for that matter so when the seventh lord is connected to jupiter mercury venus moon benefit planets in that particular scenario the spouse is beautiful now in this scenario also if this is venus and moon this is what you call sexy type of beauty you know when if it is mercury or jupiter this is sober type of beauty so sober beauty is like you know nose having a good build lips having a good build eyes having a good build good looking face right so this is sober like you know well shaped eyes well shaped nose well shaped jaw line the sober beauty is given by jupiter mercury sexiness what you consider sex appeal what is considered you know muscular boy kind of stuff this is given by venus and moon venus moon on the other hand will also give fair complexion that jupiter or mercury may not give but even if the person is not fair not white in complexion other things whatever comes in the beauty standards general beauty standards will be there right so point i was explaining was what the what the house lord will do and what the house will do so see you the step is simple house house lord significator this is how it is standard followed in astrology house house lord significator but for me all three of them are different now you come to house the prime point here now in this scenario you will go to set planet in house planet influencing the house thirdly if there is no planet in the house no planet influencing the house then you go to rashi rashi in the house now regarding rashi in that house rashi also have multiple significations head rising hind rising day strong night strong the symbol of the rashi what is the tatva of the rashi what is the movability of the rashi etc etc it have to be predicted based on that but the prime point is the preference of rashi in deciding the result of the house is only when there is no planet or no influence over the house if there is an influence of planet by aspect or by situation in that particular house then in that particular scenario rashi rather than being the deciding factor for the matter what you are trying to analyze with that house becomes becomes a decide, deciding factor or you say factor related to beneficence beneficence or factor related to strength weakness of the planet 
So this is one major assumption that you will have to keep in mind because if you don't keep it in mind, this will be a problem. Okay. Now, planet in the house, planet aspecting the house. Both have the same scenario. First of all, what you will see, the planet is benefit or malefic. Now this beneficence and maleficence is seen to ways. Natural benefit, malefic. Functional benefit, malefic. There is one more thing that I will say you that there is nothing which is black and white. Things are gray. Human life, things are gray and you have to find that gray point. So you see, natural malefic planet is Sun, Mars, Saturn, Rahu. But why they are categorized as malefics? Because the things that they signify are not considered good on the standards of society. For example, Sun being adamant in nature, overconfidence, being bossy. Now, this is not considered good as per the society. Mars indicate fights, arguments, aggressiveness, anger. This is not considered good as per society. Saturn will indicate laziness, sadism, disappointments, a person not wanting to give effort. This is not considered good as per society. Raho will indicate cheating, being over clever, using people for your own purpose. This is also not considered good as per society. So when these planets will influence the seventh house, what will happen? The things that I have told you, and along with this, there are many other significations related to planets that I have covered in many of my videos. So these significations will come to pass with respect to marriage. Now because, now see, there will be a difference. There is a very subtle difference here that I will explain. Planet Saturn situated in the seventh house, what will happen? A spouse will give you misery. Right? Or marriage will give you misery. Rather, marriage will give you misery and this is not your mistake. On the other hand, Saturn can aspect the seventh house. That way also it will create an influence. Remember, Placement first, aspect after that. But Saturn by aspect can also create misery. And if this aspect is from the ascendant, then this misery in marriage you are creating. So you will have to keep this in check, mold your ways, think how I can stop doing this and your marital life will be happy. Now Mars can also, sorry, Saturn can also influence the 7th house from the 10th house and 5th house. Now you say 10th house, now you see 10th house indicate karma. This is your 10th house, so this is your karma. So Saturn influencing the 7th house from the 10th house because of your karma you are creating problem. So you are creating problem. Secondarily, Mar Saturn is influencing from the 3rd house. Now third house is the house of children that you don't produce singularly, you produce with someone. So when Saturn is connected to the seventh house through third through fifth house, aspecting seventh house with his third aspect, the misery that is being produced in marriage, because Saturn is karga for misery, is because of both. The person also, partner also. On the flip side, Benefic planets, Jupiter, Moon, Venus, Mercury, they indicate good traits. And Jupiter indicate wisdom. Venus will indicate attachment. Moon will indicate enjoyment. Mercury will indicate same intellectual level, same choices. And when they are connecting with the seventh house, these are the good results that they are giving in marriage. You enjoy because of that. Right? In, in this scenario, Jupiter, Mercury will also indicate finances. So the person is having good finances. You're getting my point. Now, there will be a point of confusion. Jupiter influencing the seventh house can be the lord of third, sixth, eighth and twelfth house. Then the point will be whether it will be good result giving because it is Jupiter or it will be a bad result giving because it is the use of sixth house. You don't have to confuse here. As I have told you, remember the point. 
life is not black and white it is gray basically functional malefic if i am talking of functional malefic third sixth eighth and twelfth house lord are functional malefics this house i am talking from the ascendant the same house is, is to be seen from the house itself when you check it from the house the ninth house will become the third house from the seventh house and eighth house will become second house eighth house from the seventh house will be the second house so basically speaking second lord third lord sixth lord eighth lord ninth lord twelfth lord when connected to the seventh house can create problem in that scenario also ninth house you indicate you know it is father luck fortune family sorry fortune second house indicates family finances etc now see jupiter as the sixth lord is influencing the seventh house the good results that jupiter indicate wisdom good finances understanding children and uh, taking decisions after mutually discussing with each other that will be there for sure that jupiter is given but now as a sixth lord because sixth house indicate fight wounds attack displeasure Hmm. Animity. This is what sixth lord indicates. Jupiter influencing the seventh house as a sixth lord. He will also indicate these things. So in this scenario, it is the same Jupiter, which is giving good result in finances after marriage because Jupiter is the karaka for finances. This is the same Jupiter who is giving a understanding spouse. But this is the same Jupiter who, as the sixth lord, is creating problem. who as a sixth lord is creating tension who is the sixth lord is creating fight right so these both things are being given by jupiter and in this particular scenario don't get confused right so this is how you will have to analyze it hmm you will give first preference to planets in the house second preference you will give to the planet aspecting the house there can be more than one planet situated in the house there can be more than one planet influencing the house you will have to take the influence of all this will not happen that jupiter and saturn both are in the house so the result of jupiter is happening saturn is not happening this will not happen result of both will happen but how will you differentiate the result of both happening then comes the second understanding first of all the prime result will be of the powerful planet right so basic point is saturn can indicate an ugly spouse because saturn is the karaka for ugliness not so good looking jupiter can indicate a good looking spouse now whether the spouse will be not so good looking or good looking because these are contradictory in that scenario you will have to check whether jupiter is more powerful or saturn if jupiter is more powerful the marriage will be beautiful good looking also means beautiful right because good looking to you have to see from the seventh lord So it will also be beautiful or good. This you have done in those predictions which seems to be contradictory. Now those predictions which does not seem to be contradictory. For example, Saturn can indicate a lazy spouse. Jupiter can indicate a spouse who can give you financial advice that will be beneficial for you also. Now this is not contradictory. Person can be lazy also, good in finances also. So predict both the result, right? So the first thing that I will tell you, if I have to, you know, mentor you or guide you, is don't create, uh, you know, this limitations in mind that these two things cannot happen simultaneously. That is not the point. Two things can happen simultaneously. That's not an issue. right so this is how you have to hold it now there is one more point there are two three more points that i will tell you in this particular video so analysis of a house is a very in depth topic and because it is an a very in depth topic and you cannot understand analysis of all the 12 houses of horoscope through one house only because every house will have different parameters right some planets though being malefic can be good for a particular house because that house indicates something that resonates with the nature of planet so analysis of a house is a very extensive topic because once you have mastered analysis of house you have mastered astrology 
for this particular reason to do it step by step i am doing a course from this sunday i think it is 8 this sunday i am doing a course named mastering the bhava what i am doing from complete basics so it is even suitable for beginners i will start from if you can identify if, if i tell you sun is in the fourth house aspecting the 10th house you can know what it means Sun in the fourth house aspecting tenth house. If you can understand this, you can join the course. I will start from complete basics. What is signification of a house? What does Lagana indicate? Second house indicate? Third house indicate? And then we'll go on to teaching you result of planet in house, result of one house lot in different house. That will be starting 30-40% of the course. The remaining 60% will be all together how to analyze the house. What I am teaching you in nutshell in this video, I will teach it in an elaborate manner in four or five classes in the course. Every class is two, two and a half hours. So four classes, you take almost eight hours, I will be teaching it. And along with this, I will teach remedies of how and how to time events. This I will be teaching in the course, which is starting from this Sunday. So if you are serious about learning astrology, you should be joining the course. Coming back to my point. However, in this scenario, this is important that if a planet is having less than 100% point in total aggregate of Shetbal, say less than 60 rupas, or if a planet goes into a planetary war, in that particular scenario, the result of planet is almost gone, almost nil, and such planets you should not be considering. Other than that, you should consider all the influences coming over a house. In that, you should find influence of the most powerful planet that will be the prime influence, which cannot be contradicted by other planets. And if there are more than one planet's influence in house, you will categorize it using most powerful, least powerful, least powerful, and the most least powers. And most powerful, lesser powerful, lesser powerful, least power. You will categorize it accordingly. And then the most powerful result is permanent, which can be not be overthrown by other results. Then second most powerful result is more powerful than the third most powerful result. The third most powerful result is more powerful than the least powerful result. This example I am giving you, keeping in mind there are four influences of the house. So this is how you will have to analyze and you will have to reach on a conclusion. And in this particular scenario, you will have to keep in mind that until and unless two predictions are contradictory, there is no need to cancel it. Both things can happen because life is not black and white. In those scenarios where the predictions are contradictory, one thing is telling you it will be bad. Another thing is telling you this will be good. You should be deciding based on the strength of planet. The result of the planet will be happening in the respective Dasha Antar Dasha. So basically the result that Jupiter is giving will happen in the Dasha Antar Dasha of Jupiter. And the result that Saturn is giving will be happening in Dasha after the shop. Saturn, keeping in mind, Saturn and Jupiter are both influenced. Now, in this particular scenario, Saturn Dasha or Jupiter Dasha will only come once. Antar Dasha will only come once in a long Mahadasha period. Then in that scenario, you will have to find a planet who is connected to or who is friendly to Jupiter. That planet in his Dasha Antar Dasha will support the results of Jupiter. And those planets who are friendly to Saturn or connected to Saturn by aspecting Saturn, conjoining Saturn, being in exchange with Saturn or being the Rashi Lord of Saturn, those planets in their Dasha and their Dasha will support the result of Saturn. So this way you can make a complete list of what will be the result related to a particular house and then in which Dasha and their Dasha, what result can be expected out of the house. And then the prediction will be complete. Without this particular analysis, telling the results is not good. For a particular example, I am telling you a combination for extramarital. Okay. Now for this extramarital affair to happen, the partner's horoscope, if the person A is married to person B, if person A is going to have an extramarital affair, that means he is going to cheat the person B. The person B in his horoscope should have Rahu influencing their 7th house that indicates cheating. Or 12th Lord influencing their 7th house that indicates partner ignoring you or going to someone else. 
So the analysis of the horoscope should be done keeping multiple things in mind. Getting my point, if the most powerful planet influencing the seventh house is Jupiter, and this Jupiter is not lord of bad houses, in that particular scenario, other Saturn, Rahu influencing the seventh house, but not being more powerful than Jupiter cannot break the marriage. Keeping this particular thing in mind, analysis of a house should be done and without a proper analysis of a house, reaching on a result is not recommended, not advised. I am pretty sure that I have cleared a few topics for you, how to analyze the house, how to assimilate between functional malefics and functional benefits and if there are more than one influences, how to know which influence will be coming at what point of time and what influence will be dominated. So I hope this video helped you in getting more knowledge of astrology and took you one step closer to making accurate predictions, making proper analysis, something which I aim to do in all of my courses and in all of my videos. So thank you for watching it. We will meet the next time.